I mean, I just went out there and I ran. There was no race plan going into it. Uh, do what I need to do that I felt like I needed to do to go into the next round. And uh, I mean, that's just all that went into it. Prayed about it, executed, went for it. However, you know, I just wanted to do my part and not get left empty handed on the back end. So I want to guarantee my spot. All right. Our first question here will be from Ken Go. Raven, did, did you feel a little Hayward magic in the in the stretch? Um, I did. Uh, I must have felt it at the beginning, though. I mean, it was such a, it felt like a big hug with everyone cheering. Um, I'm definitely glad to be back. From Rob Mosley, you faced a couple different challenges and seemed to maintain your poise. Do you feel like your experience was a factor in this performance? Um, for sure. And I feel like how I went into the race. I mean, I went into the race just free. Last race I ran was Portland Track Festival. And I did some work in the meantime. It really worked on some things. And this was my first race back since that race. And so, I mean, just taking my experience um, and what my coach and I have been working on, that's what got me through today. From Chris Hansen, is there a sense of relief to get this race out of the way? Oh, man, is it? I feel like the hardest part was getting started. I mean, being along the whole time, watching everyone, everyone's dreams come true, making the team all the emotions. I was just ready to get started. Um, and I'm just, I'm just really letting God just carry me through the way. Sounds real cliche, but this year has been a challenging year for me. And today was definitely a positive on the upside for me. From Kevin Sully, what's been the biggest change since joining Pete's group? The biggest change is, of course, it's a new coach. So this year is my first year, really championship year with him as well. So it's a little tough for us both, but we're we're making the best of it, and we've got we've grown so much since I joined the group in June. Um, so, of course, the communication barriers, learning how to communicate, learning what word may mean to him, something that resonates with me, um, and then also um, the fact that I train by myself. Um, we've actually started working on that, so that's a better step in the right direction as well. From Weldon Johnson. In your last two 800s, you were fifth and sixth place. Has your training been going well this year? And how would you compare your fitness to, to, to 2019? Um, it's funny because my summer track coach tends to say that I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> um, and so the fact that um, I started my season late in 2019, I was a late bloomer then too. I mean, that was a whole year of really just trying to figure it out and learn through races. And so honestly, the reality is that I'm still learning through races um, and God willing, I can like have the best executed race in Tokyo. And then also from Weldon Johnson, what was the biggest reason for the change in coaches? You had great success in 2019. Um, I would say the resources. I have a team here. I had my team then, but it was my girls, um, my sisters. But I actually have a team here where we have our on staff physio, our on staff strength and conditioning coach. Um, you know, there's a track that I don't live too far from. Um, there's just a lot of things that are helping me stay a little bit more consistent and just keep progressing. All right. And I want to give everyone in the chat a little bit more time to type any questions. If you are going to type any, please use the raise your hand feature so I know you're typing. <laughs> so what does it mean to you to be able to compete at the trials for a chance to go to the Olympics here at Hayward? It means the world. Um, obviously, I want to do my best. I want to make the Duck fans proud and my second family. Um, but to also be here in trials on a second, I feel like a different chapter of my career. Um, 
it's truly a blessing and I'm just looking forward. I'm so excited. Even going into this race, there was so many emotions like excitement. I wasn't really nervous, more so anxious, but there's so much more excitement because I know that there's so much more that's coming my way. All right. From Tom Shad at USA Today, have you been following the college season that a thing Mo had this year? And if so, what stands out about her? Uh, I haven't been following her season, but I have seen how she's been doing really well this year. I would say what stands out about her um, is definitely she's a very uh, passionate runner. She's very ambitious. She's a go-getter. Um, but she's also such a sweet girl. She loves pugs. <laughs> um, but just being an all-in-all -all great human and just seeing her side and learning the things I have learned about her and then seeing go out on the track and really kind of really go for what I what I stand for is really like you're not too young to really do anything you're not too old to you know it's never too late and I'm glad you know it's funny because I she reminds me of myself as far as how much of a goal getter like a goal setter and a goal getter I was at her age being that we're not too far apart but you know still and so it really her, her ambitiousness and how she just doesn't let being an 18 19 year old stop her from really getting after it that's something I really uh admire about her all right and then from Weldon Johnson being from Houston do you think you'll have an advantage with the heat this weekend <laughs> it's funny because people are like you know you should be fine with the heat you're from Houston I'm like how only go home like three or four times a year but um I don't know if I would say advantage but it definitely would be a muscle memory type thing especially since I spent most of my childhood since I was five in the Texas heat on Saturdays so you know this heat all I could do is just stay hydrated and really kind of just execute all right from Travis Teach at KOIN6 Portland. Can you talk about when you found out you would have your image on the, Bower, uh, on the Bowerman Tower? What's it like to walk into Hayward and see that tribute to you doing these trials? Um, it's a gift from God. Uh, and it's just a gift. And honestly, I, I like I said, it's just a gift because I mean, it's something that I wouldn't have expected. Um, all I could do is focus on wherever I'm placed at in life. Um, and at that time being in Eugene, Oregon, um, just making my most of it and leaving an impact. And I'm just so grateful that I was able to really impact the lives of so many people and really have so many people become family. I feel like a big part of Track Town USA is, has become a huge part of me. And um, it's something that every time I see the tower, uh, even coming onto campus, I mean, when they first told me that I was gonna be on the tower on the email, I was so excited and I told my family. And what made me the most um, touching and so happy about it was how it affected my grandmother. My grandmother is the closest person I have to my grandpa. My grandpa passed. So she's a very strong figure in our family. And to see her so excited um, and to know that it was worth it for me coming to all the way out here and only coming home twice a year during college. And then them coming to see it today, it was her first time seeing it in person. Um, it just makes it just really is a heartwarming heartwarming feeling um and like i said coming onto the track and seeing it even coming down to agate i could just only think about how blessed i am and i mean even to be at the top during the rendering i was at the bottom and i remember talking to someone how you know it's not that big about placement but it's really a stand on my faith and really is a reassurance on my faith because God will place you at the top. You know, he's not going to let you settle at the bottom. Um, not that Ashton either is settling, but for him to, you know, for me to even have that position on the final position to be at the top of the tower is a blessing and a reminder of um, how God has been moving in my life over the years. All right. And I want to give everyone a little bit more time to type any questions. Uh, please use the raise your hand function if you have any. Uh, can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on, like, because you said your grandmother goes, is able to come out and see you compete in these trials and to mm -hmm. see that tower and that for the first time. Can you talk about like her experience when she first saw that? Unfortunately, I really wanted to be there during her first time seeing it. Um, but I told my little sister to record it for me. But even, I mean, I was on the phone, my aunt who is here today, she, um, 
she's here and you know the fact that okay my aunt she got into a car accident when she was younger and so she's paralyzed but for her to see it to be able to get on the plane and to see it in person um I was on the phone when she saw it she was so excited because everyone has seen it in person except for her and my dad my dad seeing it in person um you know it's it's honestly like the best gift that was that University of Oregon and Nike and the track fans blessed me to have. And I was able to bless my family. I mean, to be able to do that and represent the Rogers legacy that my grandpa left as a coach and to really take it abroad and go further and God willing internationally and globally. Um, and it will be, I mean, with Worlds being here next year, um, it's, it's such a great gift. I can't thank uh, Nike and University of Oregon enough. It's, a, it's something that I've never experienced ever in my life. It doesn't appear that we have any further questions coming in in the chat. So congratulations on the race today. Thank you for Thank joining you. us and we'll let you go get prepared for the next round. Thank you, Scott. <laughs>